Ah, the one area that I always wanted Supernatural to go. Courtroom drama. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 4 of Supernatural Season 7, Defending Your Life. And I actually don't mind this one. Now, admittedly, the episode is, I feel, a form of damage control for Dean as a character, considering the absolute assassination they've been doing with him of late. Always does. So it kind of does make sense in terms of this mistrust between Sam and Dean. Out of all of the examples that I can think of in terms of Dean and Sam ever lying to each other after season five, this is probably one of the more stronger ones. A very boneheaded, very fucking stubborn Dean does something out of his own jest and his own ignorance, and he's like, oh, you know what? That maybe might have not have been a good fucking idea. I murdered a mother. He has that actual guilt, that hiddenness about him, and that is used against him by this Egyptian god who puts him on trial. It doesn't put him on trial in terms of trying to prove to others that he is innocent. It is delving deep into Dean himself to see whether he actually feels like he is guilty or not. And I actually really like that in terms of him being an adversary. He's not sort of a pseudo villain. He is just weighing people by their guilt. Is he kind of going after some people that don't entirely deserve it? But there is the one gentleman who served his time in jail who's served 30 years and now he's out and he's immediately killed. But it's all because these guys walk into this bar and they find him. Seeing this episode, we have the guilt that Dean is riddled with after killing Jewel. And they can't afford to bring her back, so instead of getting her back for this episode, we get Joe back. And I actually liked her inclusion in this episode. It made sense, it worked well, it kind of built a little bit more on this character. I liked how she goes about trying to kill him. The other people who are there, or at least who have killed these other people, they're acting out of vengeance or they're just a car that's dead set on running over someone. Whereas in this one, she has sympathy. She doesn't want to do this, so she's trying to do this and sort of the most common, peaceful way possible by blowing them up in a very pseudo resemblance to that of what happened to her. I actually also really like the clip show in this. If you wanted to ever get a clip show of Supernatural history, this is a good one. Is it a little bit of low hanging fruit? Yeah, but it actually doesn't do a bad job in terms of what it is. There is the kind of hanging joke with Sam when he steals the horn and the guy, the, the, the minister comes in, he's like, oh, I guess you're not here for bar mitzvah training. I was really wanting to see how that interaction ended, but it, it doesn't, there's no follow up to it. it doesn't bring the horn back. I, I, that was a joke left hanging if I can believe that. <laughs> For the most part, this episode has a great self-reflection on Dean. I like how he actually feels shitty about it. He knows exactly what's coming when the guy teases this final witness. He would rather accept exactly what he is than have his recent absolute ass of dickery be shown to Sam and betray his brother. He would rather keep his brother in the dark than have any more say in what is actually in terms of his innocence. Except when we come to the very end of the episode, when Sam asks him, who do you think he was going to bring? Now, admittedly, this is a writing critique because the dialogue he says, oh, could have been anyone, whoever, people we killed. I feel that that was just him, like, not accepting anything that just happened. He's kind of just brushed off this whole, hey, you know your actions? They have some fucking consequences. That's just gone. That's just erased. And he's just back to being him because he immediately turns it on Sam and says, how do you not have any guilt? And Sam, admittedly, it does open up an idea of how Sam is dealing with everything. He's just, you know, he went through hell. He doesn't have the guilt anymore. He has served his penance. And I'm curious to see if this is going to quell Dean's like, oh, you know, Sam, you're losing a man, blah, 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 just being a giant douchebag about it. So episodes are super strong up until the end. It just kind of loses a point for Dean's entire adversity in this episode being kind of just away. 
So I am going to give Defending Your Life a 4 out of 7. It's a pretty average episode. I, I, I think it's good. I liked it. I would have given it a 5 had it not completely washed away everything that happened at the end, but I still enjoyed it. But now those are my thoughts about this episode. Let's see what you guys have to say. Defending Your Life breaks the shippers of Joe and Dean, where Joe confirms she didn't have any romantic feelings towards him. And who would blame her? I love Egyptology, and I was exciting to see the interpretation of Osiris. I love how in this episode where Sam and Dean don't kill Osiris, but just banish him for centuries. The episode also portrays ghosts as a unique way, but it also really handles Dean's guilt for killing Amy very well, as well as it starts to weigh on him. My favorite part, interestingly enough though, is that Sam doesn't feel guilty because his time in hell has made him feel like he's paid his dues and that his punishment was for the better. Now, like I said, yeah, he does make Dean feel bad about it until the very end of the episode. And I don't know, I feel like there was still something between, like, you know, they work that. That's the whole idea of how the the trial works, is that Sam is able to, you know, use his lawyerness to get around it. So I don't know, I always feel like there was something there. What can I say about Defending Your Life? I've always been a fan of Egypt mythology and well, from watching House of Anubis. So when I started watching this episode, oh, House of Anubis, what was that show? Uh, I watched this episode, I was hooked when they mentioned Osiris. I always like it when they take a spin on the original lore of anything. If anything, it makes the show more engaging. When Sam himself was on the stand at first, I half expected him to put his perspective on things, and it's the same for Dean. Also, with Joe coming back as a ghost was well done, and we get to see her side of things as well. Overall, the episode is sort of a gut-punching when Joe started the oven and tried to get the lighter for the scene. That made me emotional. Yeah, that was a very good part. This episode does have its flaws, and the connectivity to the Amy plotline was done very well, especially with Sam and Dean was interested to know uh, who the final witness would be, which made Dean didn't say anything because he and Osiris knew it was going to be Amy. I I'm only glad that Amy plotline is going to end in three episodes and continue with the Leviathans and Sam's hallucinations for the rest of the season. I'll give this episode a four or five. Oh, cool. We we're on the same page there, Lauren. I'm not surprised that Dean was feeling guilty about killing Amy. I'm really sorry for Sam because he doesn't realize that Dean once again lied to him. I really like the Osiris. I find him to be irritating to me, even though he was right about the toxic codependent bond between Sam and Dean. I was surprised to see Joe again. It was great seeing her, and I was glad to see Sam stab Osiris. I really wish Dean would have told Sam the truth at the end of the episode, but I'm not surprised he never did. Uh, the last one here. Supernatural may have bad CGI and uh, here and there, but I give it credit. It would never got as bad as Supergirl or the modern Flash, which now looks like the Power Rangers. Yes, 100% on that. I know the fans are always wanting legit monsters, but I appreciate leaving more to the imagination and not having to half-ass CGI abominations for a demon. I will give you credit on that. That's what I think that they're trying to do with the Leviathan. Like, I think they're trying to make this... They're doing what they can with what they have. And yeah, um, some of the stuff that was being done on The Flash and Supergirl, that stuff really aged. Like, I think if you want to watch uh, watch uh, Corridor Crew, they actually did an episode specifically about that one that was that from episode of Supergirl that was getting the rounds. Um, they talked about just the timeline, the crunch, and the impossibility with budget limitations that those shows ran into as years went on. All right, guys, thank you for the, your comments. Now the next episode is the one that I thought this one is. This is the one that has spikes from Buffy. This is Shut Up Dr. Phil. So give me your guys' thoughts about that in the comments below and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise, guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next week.